morning, everyone. So, I wanted to share with you all my newest blog post. And I really feel like um, the Lord has been dealing with me because um, going through a trial in my life right now, as many of you all know, um, uh, being diagnosed with breast cancer back in January, thankfully they were able to remove it all surgically. Um, but the journey hasn't stopped, you know, I'm still going through the journey, I'm still going through the trial, you know, best course of action as far as, you know, treatment for myself is concerned. And it, it gets hard, you know, it really starts to play on your mental because you just get tired, you know, you get tired of thinking about it, you get tired of thinking about what if it comes back or should I do the chemo, should I not do the chemo? So I know that the Lord has been dealing with me regarding going through afflictions and what's the best way to go through afflictions. And um, if I could find where I was, James chapter one is pretty much where I've been at these past couple of days. Even um, in the mornings, I've been listening to the same prayer on YouTube and it's really been encouraging me, you know, and it helps me put my focus where it needs to be. So I'm going to share with y'all um, my recent blog post that I just wrote. Um, can't stay the whole time. That's cool. I'm going to save this video and I'm going to share it so that um, it can be watched again. And I'm really excited to share this with y'all. Um, I feel like this world is it's, it's becoming godless. So I want to be that light. I want to continue to talk about God and talk about the goodness of the Lord and um, spreading the love of Jesus. Just, just, you know, just being that light that sits on top of a hill. Um, all right. So my blog is called, Do You Ever Doubt God? Yes. I think we all at some point in our life have doubted God's ability to move in our circumstances. When the distractions of life come, it can be hard to continually keep your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verses 6 through 7, but let him ask in faith without doubting. For the doubter is like the surging sea driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So this scripture really speaks to me because it draws attention to my flesh that is weak. There's been many times in my life that I had no faith and I was doubtful. But I'm sure that most of those times I wasn't drawn near to God. I was drawing near to myself and the things of this world. Nothing can be accomplished by being double-minded. Goals will become a far-fetched dream and desires may not truly be fulfilled. I feel like doubting also comes along with anxiety. Anxiety is always, isn't always fear of something. It can also be a state of mind without peace. To stop doubting, we truly have to let go of the steering wheel and surrender to God, allowing him to take complete control no matter the circumstance. I cannot promise that it will get better instantly, but I do know that God has many promises in store for those who love him. Romans 8.28 specifically says, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. This is such great news, y'all. God's promises allow us to relax and abide in him safely and securely, knowing that he will take care of us. Philippians chapter 4, verses 19. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I also encourage you to read the whole chapter of Psalms 91. It talks about 
abiding in the secret place of the Most High. Trusting, believing, and having faith in God is major. To be able to rest in him and not be overcome by the pressures of this world is a gift that cannot be bought with money. You cannot obtain it through your social media following. It's a choice that we, um, it's a choice. And I believe that every day that we open our eyes is another chance to obtain this rest, peace, and freedom. Lamentations chapter three, verses 22 through 23 says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So if that is, oh, let me skip to the next page. Another, another example here. Jesus, Jesus tested Peter's faith by telling him to come out of the boat to walk on water. You can read about this in Matthew chapter 14. So when Peter came out of the boat, he got distracted by the storm and he took his eyes off Jesus. Essentially, he doubted God for a moment, allowing him to begin to sink in the water. And I know we all can relate to feeling like that. So when Peter was sinking, he cried out to Jesus for help. And Jesus stretched out his hand and said, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So if Jesus can save Peter, he will save us. I mean, he already did. We just have to surrender to him and he will place us where we need to be. So if that is you today, I encourage you to surrender to the most high God and ask him to take control of your life. All right, y'all, I'm gonna sign out of here. I pray that this bless someone and I pray that you have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.